Actually, there are some good mangas like Solo Leveling. People all over the world currently call only I Level Up as the first name when they need to get a manga like Solo Leveling. Are you looking for a new manga to read? If yes, then you've hit the right place. Solo Leveling is the... well, not just the... it's literally among the top 10 mangas of its kind. If you enjoy reading it, then here is a list of some similar mangas just for you. And let's get to the list. Number 10, The Devil Ring. This manga has like 100 plus chapters, also this manga got anime adaptations too, so feel free to read or watch this. A college freshman, Zhao Shainon, accidentally puts a ring of unknown origin from the Shang Dynasty and spits out a horrible blood zombie from his mouth. A secret in the history of mankind is unveiled. Overall, I like the story and the art style is very good. I don't like the fight scenes though, but nah, they're fine I guess. I don't recommend it though. I totally recommend it. Number 9. Crazy Leveling System this manga got a lot of potential, a classic Chinese manga, don't read it if you are looking for something good, also this manga has like 4 or 5 chapters, maybe. I know I know, it's short, but this manga is about a weak boy, as time goes he cultivates and becomes strong by the help of a system overall. I really enjoy reading this also, and the art is nice too. If you want some manga with a weak MC suddenly who becomes powerful, you know, OP, then this is a must read for you. Number 8. RPG Comic While there's a decent leading plot and the characters are pretty funny, the art is incredibly lacking. Espera! The most popular virtual MMORPG of the century, but the game loses its momentum. Yep, it does. When the legendary player quits, only to return two years later for no apparent reason. What will become of Espera now? I love the series, so please give it a try. It may look like I've spoiled a lot of it, but actually, I've just told you about the first time these characters are introduced. The first two in chapter 1, and Katana in chapter 3. Seeing as I got this much detail from a summary, and of only 3 out of 90 plus chapters, you should really give this a shot. Number 7. Auto Hunting. This starts off normally like you expect it to, but the story is more realistic and much better. It just rides on the waves of those OP Korean MC fighting dungeon monsters. You know, the dead faced black hair dude. What makes these mangas interesting is that they have a great art style and sometimes very good fight scenes. Also, it's fun to see the MC beating up people and monsters. The total feel, and I mean the total of it, of the webtoon really reminds me of solo leveling and Second Life Ranker. The story is pretty good. I really enjoyed it to be honest, it's okay, but it's definitely not the best out there. The world under attack by monsters that are pouring from the fracture and the hunters who hunt those monsters are the most coveted job in the world currently. One day, Oh Young Sung, who works his hardest from day to day as a worker in a meat restaurant, awakens an ability to automatically hunt the monsters with the perfect techniques and physical prowess, like an MMORPG where he presses a button, auto-hunting that appears in front of him. If you're bored and got nothing to read, then this is the one for you, boys and girls! Number 6. Unable to become the main force I believe it has a lot of potential and it's a very good story. It's quite good and starts off just as a solo leveling poem, but its mechanics are very unique. It's a combination between Yu-Gi-Oh, solo leveling, and Pokemon. It takes some light elements from those others mangas, and those others mawas, but tries to do something a bit different from others. He was identified for having poor aptitude, unable to become the main force despite being the main character and obtain a legendary professional card player and since then he walks on leveling route, which is different from most people. Level up by playing cards. This is a very very different kind of manga. I recommend it no matter what. I just recommend the potatoes out of it, man. Number 5. The Dungeon Master. Jorno is a typical guy trying to find a full-time job, but one day he dives into the Han River and puts himself at risk of drowning to save a child that fell in. As he is about to meet an untimely death, a goddess appears before him and gives him a chance at another life. 
Not as a hero or a wizard, but as a weak, skillless brick larva. It's the beginning of an atrocious adventure, and the road to become a hero is long. The art is really good, and the plot is intense, and it will make you cynical, and the main character is someone you can truly enjoy. Give it a try. You gotta give it a try. If you are prepared to handle a long wait before the story continues, if it ever does. Number 4. The S Classes That I Raised This manga surprised me. This is actually a very good, tamer manga out there. The manga is relatively new, but so far it's pretty decent. The art is really good and the characters are portrayed well. The MC goes through a time regression after dying in a dungeon. He's been weak all his life but receives a skill after the time regression that follows and allows him to nurture other players and the stronger the players he nurtures, and the stronger he gets. An F rank hunter too, a useless pathetic F rank Jung who dragged down his amazing S rank brother. To me, who'd half, you know, half-heartedly live a disastrous life that ended up devouring my brother's life and making me regress? The title given was Perfect Caregiver. That's right. This time, instead of fussing about myself, I'll just uh, quietly look after those amazing bastards. Not what I thought, but the S ranks are a little weird. Pretty good manga overall. Number three, leveling up alone. It is very interesting. When I started reading it, there were two webtoons that immediately came to my mind. Solo leveling and I am the sorcerer gang. Because it was quite similar and familiar to these two, I started liking it and after just a few chapters, it was quite familiar to these two and I started liking it. And after just a few chapters, it became quite good. I mostly like that he gets some kind of a guy like Rimuru gets, you know, the what do we call it? The Tensai Shitara Slime Data Kit. That seems very interesting. It is pretty good. The MC is smart and strong. And the plot is both classic and original. And you will not get bored even though it is fairly slow. Read it. Living in a world infested monsters is hard enough. But doing it without powers? That's Hanyuel's life in a nutshell. Fearsome beasts roam the earth and will kill everyone in their path. Elite members of Fearsome Beasts are amazing, to be honest, but the elite members of a society called the Awakening mobilize to protect humanity with their supernatural abilities. Amidst it all, Hennyol is just a poor porter, tasked as a sideline support, but when a benevolent being gifts him with special abilities, he is ready to harvest all the loot and take it to the next level. Pretty interesting story, to be very honest, you gotta give this one a read. Number 2. Player starting from today. Hmm, this manga is a new good manga out there. Hunters are sponsored by Patrons. The 12 most brilliant heroes established Eden calling themselves God. That's the time when I and Lee Jun Kyung lived. I lived the life of a cattle like any other ordinary man. One book I was about was a forgotten hero, a bibliography of a true hero. Athena, one of the 12 rulers of Eden, comes to me. Do you want to go to the past more than 100 years ago? To the days when hunters appeared, this one who sponsored the king supported me. I continued to walk similarly to the life in which the hero lived. I dream of a better future than the king. The power I have now, the hunter beyond the hunter being the player. I'm a player from today onwards. The beginning is great, and the story development is normal pace, and the art is not the best, but it's still very good. I recommend it. Number 1. Descent of the Demon Master this isn't your typical manga where the OPMC battles new enemies and, uh, you know, ventures off to save the world. The MC is just trying to live a normal life with OP powers and it's incredibly entertaining. Jin Hu Kang used to be an average teenager before an accident took away his family and his ability to walk. After reincarnating in medieval China, he becomes a demon master known as Crimson Emperor. When his life is tragically cut short, he wakes up back in his previous life before the accident and with his powers and martial arts prowess intact. All Jinu wants to do now is live a normal life, but he soon realizes that the monsters exist even in the modern world, and only he can stop them. Of course, it might be a little boring and slow to pick up at the beginning, but once the secretary arrives, that's when everything becomes funny. That's all for today, hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, then give this video a like and share it with your friends and your family, and also subscribe for more Top 10. Stay safe and take care. My name is Zira Khan, and I'm the voice of the voiceless. See you next time.
Thank you.